My guest on Bridges today says that suffering and heartache stain every life. But she says in the midst of all of that, there is hope even in our brokenness. Welcome to Bridges. I'm Monica Schmelter, and I'm glad that you could join us today. My guest is Johanna Mackin, and Johanna, good to have you here today on Bridges. Thank you. It's good to be here. So I was intrigued uh, about your book. The book is called The Inheritance, and it's a true story about the things we leave behind. And I, I want to hear about your story. Uh, not many people write mm -hmm. about suffering. And you share your story of suffering and also talk about your great-great-grandfather, who was a famous evangelist. That's quite a legacy. Mm. Tell us about him. Well, I've known about him my whole life. Mm -hmm. um, and the things that I knew about him were in connection with Dwight L. Moody. He and Dwight L. Moody uh, partnered for many years together on crusades and revivals. Uh, he also wrote the famous hymn, One Day. Uh, you know, the Casting Crown song, mm -hmm. they redid that song. It's a beautiful song. Uh, he and wrote he that. wrote that. He wrote that in the midst of pastors. Uh, not not necessarily wanting to stand behind the gospel as the full truth. And mm -hmm. so he wrote uh, that beautiful song as a reminder of the truth of the gospel and what Christ has done. Uh, he also wrote Our Great uh, our great Savior, Jesus, What a Friend for Sinners, another well-known hymn. Very well-known hymn. If him. you're familiar with yes. that one, yes. Uh, and so he has, he has left behind a rich legacy uh, of songs, but also... Uh, of places that he went and ministered the gospel in, in Chicago and in Boston, uh, in, in Los Angeles and Atlanta, even in Nashville. He traveled all over the world and at a time when no, no one was traveling quite like that. Right. Uh, today you can travel wherever you want uh, <laughs> in, like that, but yes. he would have to take obviously ships to get uh, to Europe. And, yeah. and it had to be much harder than yes. travel is today yes. and take so much longer. And so when I hear his name mentioned along with Dwight L. Yes. Moody. You know, you just yes. think, oh my goodness, yes. what a legacy yes. that you have and these famous hymns mm -hmm. that have endured yeah. for the years and tell such a strong mm -hmm. gospel story. Mm -hmm. And yet, as I read your book, and the book again is The Inheritance, he had mm -hmm. a lot of suffering in his mm -hmm. life in the midst of mm -hmm. serving Christ wholeheartedly. Yeah. And this is what I found out. I, I was originally wanting to just share about his life, uh, the beautiful parts. And when I began to do more research, I realized, whoa, he has experienced incredible loss. Mm -hmm. And I didn't see that before because as families, we don't talk about the, the pain of the past. We usually talk about the success. Right. Uh, and so I thought there's got to be something beyond uh, the success. And what I found out was that um, he lost uh, a wife. He lost two wives, uh, lost a child early in infancy, he lost much of his health, um, but it didn't stop him from doing what God had called him to do. It actually, uh, I say this in the book, and I love actually the way I said it, it galvanized his resolve. Mm -hmm. And it's like it put steel, uh, the strongest, it put mm -hmm. the strongest structure around his pain, and it actually what moved him forward. Yeah. And I think what helped him relate with every audience that he came in contact with, yeah. because he knew the, the genuine, the pain, mm -hmm. but he also knew the power that was available through that. And so I really wanted to write about his life. <laughs> and then I began to realize, whoa, I've had my own pain. And what if God wants me to use my own pain to help other people in their pain? Mm -hmm. So he was a motivating factor in me telling my own story. I wasn't originally going to tell my story. I just wanted to tell his because it's beautiful. It's a beautiful story. Yes. And that your great-great-grandfather was such a famous yes. evangelist yes. and she pinned so much of his life. Uh, yeah. The parts that would be the beautiful part and then the part of his suffering and the loss, the things that he went through. Mm. The name of the book is The Inheritance and is written by my guest today, Johanna Mackin. And, you know, I just, Johanna, one of the things that I think about is that it's not easy mm. in Christianity mm. necessarily to talk about suffering. Mm. It's also the part that I don't like. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm in a, a season of just intense mm -hmm. suffering right now. And I know last night when I prayed, mm -hmm. I said to the Lord, there's nothing in mm -hmm. me that wants this season of pain. Mm -hmm. I do not want this. However, I mean, like if there's any way the cup can pass, however, <laughs> if it can't, yeah. 
then do in me mm. what needs to be done. Mm. And you're saying for your great, great grandfather, mm. he, two, two wives that he lost, mm. it, and it was an infant child, yes. wasn't it? Yes, yes, and which yet, was more, that was more common yeah. uh, back then. And, and what year are we talking about? 1908, 1909. 1908, so. 1909, and he traveled mm -hmm. the world mm -hmm. in 1908 and 1909. Mm -hmm. Yes, an incredible, uh, incredible stamina, but he had great purpose. Mm -hmm. And his purpose actually came from his pain. Mm -hmm. uh, I think just in what you're talking about, the idea that uh, the pioneer of our salvation, Hebrews says that God saw it fitting, that the pioneer of our salvation would suffer. Uh, that, that verse just arrests me because I realize there has to be value in suffering. Why would God have had his son suffer? Why not have him be a victorious hero. Right. Why not have him go through something different? Mm -hmm. um, but it was suffering that he chose because he knew that suffering is what transforms us. And so uh, we don't get, I often say this, we, we don't get stronger by sitting at the gym. No, we don't. We actually have to have the <laughs> tension and the pain we do. to get stronger. Mm -hmm. We don't get stronger uh, by, by feeding on everything we want to eat. We actually have to sacrifice if we want to get leaner or healthier. Right. And so I don't think it's any different in the spirit. I think that the, the one thing, if I, this is my message, is suffering transforms us. Yeah, yeah. and I think that that can be pivotal yes. for us as individuals and for you that are watching, because yes. sometimes we think that suffering is just a result of our mm. mistakes mm. and of our failures. And sometimes you know what it is. It sometimes is. it's the things that we've done that has caused problems and suffering in our mm. life. However, even under those circumstances, when we trust God, when we repent, He can use even those things to form a stronger resolve in our life. And so that's why I was so excited, mm. Johanna, to talk mm. to you today. Because, you know, I, I think, you know, so many people say, but you know, if He's a good God, mm. like why would He let, mm. why would bad things happen? Mm. Why would we suffer? And yet, when I look at my own life, I do grow mm -hmm. stronger when I suffer. Mm -hmm. I lean more on God. I press mm -hmm. in because I cannot get any relief or comfort right. otherwise. Right. I think we have a choice. And he gives us that choice in the midst of walking through our life. Uh, every human will suffer. If there's nothing that we share in common, the one thing we share is that we, we experience pain. Mm -hmm. Not everyone will be wealthy, not everyone will have a beautiful job, not everyone will have kids, but everyone yes. will suffer something. And so the idea that we get to choose in the midst of suffering, which way we'll go. Mm -hmm. One way will be to reject God and, and to uh, make life meaningless because suffering, it seems to be, no, there's no purpose. Right. The other choice is we actually can embrace it and see that God's using it for our good. Yes. And both of those have very drastic, they have very different endings. Yeah. For those that pursue God in the midst of it, there's beautiful success. Yes. For those that don't, it, it's a continuation of suffering that, that seems meaningless. Yeah. So and it's the choice he gives yeah. in the midst. And it's the choice that we have in yes. suffering to receive God yes. and to press in or to reject him. Yes. Because the relief of the suffering mm. is not always mm. within our control. Right. And you share in this book, and the book again is The Inheritance, a true story about the things we leave behind, you know, our mm. legacy. Mm. And your great, great grandfather left mm. so much behind yeah. for you and for your family. And I think he probably prayed many prayers yes, for did. his future family and for future generations. And you share in the book mm. some of your own suffering, mm -hmm. some of the hard lessons that you've learned. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us a little about that? Yeah, I had um, a lung that collapsed and I had to have a lung removed on the right side. Mm -hmm. um, I had uh, what they thought was a tumor in my hip when I was a little girl. And so I had radiation on my hip, which caused that leg to stop growing, which meant I had to have surgery on my other leg to even it out. The doctor said, you, won't, you probably won't be able to play sports. You probably won't be able to sing uh, or play an instrument uh, requiring your breath. Um, but shortly after that, I ran my first road race as a little six-year-old. Good for you. <laughs> and I, ha I have run ever since and played, I think, every sport. Because you're still a runner now, yes, I read. Yes, yes. Um, singing, playing the piano, playing the flute, anything like that that I could get my hands on. And so it was a testimony of when man said this won't be able to happen due to your uh, limitations, God said, oh, well, just watch mm -hmm. and see what I can do. And so um, lost through miscarriages, lost through losing people that, uh, that we've loved, uh, physical loss, um, 
I didn't always know it. At the time that we're going through it, we can't always see. Right. Uh, and I think what, what I want people to know is there are other people that have gone through it and that they're speaking to us mm -hmm. and they're saying, you can do this, you can get through this. But I think we have to be willing to hear from those that have suffered. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of when you and I can recognize um, that God doesn't, there's nothing wasted about our lives, that God uses it all. Then we're supposed to tell the people coming behind us. Yeah. He's not going to waste this. Many years ago, my thought process used mm. to be that what brought glory to God mm. was the end result mm. and the testimony. Mm. And, and those things can bring glory to God. It's wonderful when we get the answered prayer or when the healing yeah. comes through. Those are wonderful things. Yeah. But we don't have to wait mm -hmm. until we're at the end mm -hmm. where we know that I've got my healing or where we know that my marriage is yeah. restored or we know that my child is off drugs. It's not just the end of the story. It's trusting him in the middle of mm -hmm. suffering, trusting him when, when it's messy right. and when we don't know what it's going to look like. When mm -hmm. did you find yourself coming kind of into that knowledge? Well, I had a, a, just this profound experience when I was in my 30s going to a worship conference and I, my scars had always, uh, they had always been a, an issue of shame for me. Mm. I was always trying to hide my scars. Um, and uh, so when I was at this conference, the pastor said, I, I, I'm just going to give a anybody here a word that needs the word and it's time to stop hiding. It's time to embrace the scars in your life because those were the places that God showed up. And I had never heard anyone say that. Wow. And I remember I began to weep and I could picture the scars on my body. And it, it was in that moment that I heard the Lord say, did you know that your scars are beautiful? Mm -hmm. And they're actually what brought your salvation. And so from that moment, and that was maybe 15 years ago, uh, I have looked at suffering differently. Yeah. And I've tried to, to share that with other people. Yeah because it's important for us all to know. We've got to take a break. We want you to stay with us. When we come back, we're going to continue to take a look at this book, The Inheritance, and talk more about the role of suffering in our lives. You can purchase a copy of today's show for $15. Call us at 615-754-0039 or send a check to the address on the screen. Please mention the program number on the screen. Log on to www.ctntv.org where you can make a prayer request, view our program guide, see who's on bridges, or even watch one of Monica's latest teachings. Log on to www.ctntv.org. If you're just joining us today on Bridges, we're taking a look into the book, The Inheritance, and it's a true story about the things we leave behind. And it happens that my guest today, her great, great grandfather, was just a pivotal player, a famous evangelist who had so much to do with the early church in America. And Johanna, I've just been enjoying talking mm. to you. And for those that may not have watched the first segment, Tell us a little bit more about your great-great-grandfather and his work with Dwight L. Moody and um, how suffering really was so much a part of his life and his ministry. Well, his, his name is J. Wilbur Chapman, and he wrote some hymns that we still sing today, one day being one of those. Um, Our Great Savior is another. Uh, and he grew up in a Christian home. He had a mother and a father who uh, passed down their legacy of faith to him as a young boy. Uh, and when he got to college, he started to doubt his faith. And uh, one of his college buddies said, hey, there's a revival happening down the street. This was in Chicago. Uh, <laughs> let's go see this guy at the revival. And it happened to be Dwight L. Moody. And at the end of Dwight L. Moody's uh, sessions, he would always say, if anyone's doubting their faith, meet me in the green room. And they would go uh, by the throngs to this green room. And on this particular night, Jay Wilbur said, uh, I went and I was so nervous. And Dwight L. Moody sat down right beside me. Mm. And he looked me in the eyes and he said, what is it that you're doubting? And Jay Wilbur said, I don't know if I'm a Christian. And Dwight L. Moody opens up his Bible and he's got John, I think it's John 10, 24. Uh, and he says, read that. And Jay Wilbur reads it. And well, do you believe you're a Christian now? And he says, I think so. And <laughs> Dwight says it again, read it again. And he makes him read it three or four times. And uh, he looks at Jay Wilbur and says, do you believe what you're reading? And Jay Wilbur said, I do. And he said, don't ever doubt it again. And Jay Wilbur recounts standing up and walking out of that room, uh, a new person. 
uh, he had come in with doubt and he left with this faith and never looked back. From that moment with Dwight L. Moody, he never looked back. He would often say that he'll, uh, when he was having church problems, he would uh, call Dwight and say, I'm having an issue with a parishioner or <laughs> they don't like my song or what do I do about this? And uh, Dwight would come and meet with him and they became great friends. Uh, it's been said that Jay Wilbur uh, influenced Billy Sunday, who was a famous mm -hmm. uh, baseball player and he became a famous evangelist who influenced Mordecai Ham, who influenced Billy Graham. And so I often like to say that um, Jay Wilbur had a part in Billy Graham's salvation because of the men that he influenced that ended up influencing Billy. I think though his name is well known, I don't think it takes having a famous family member to leave a legacy. No, not at all. It doesn't take that. No, no. It takes us yes. trusting God yes. in everything that yes. we go through. It's wonderful that you have this rich legacy mm. and that you had a praying, mm. famous evangelist mm. for a great-great-grandfather who influenced the yes. salvation yes. of Billy Graham. Mm. I mean, that is a wonderful legacy. Not all of us have that. Mm. But yet we can still tell our faith stories in the middle of great suffering and know that God can use that. Because I think sometimes, Johanna, when we get into seasons of suffering, people can start to walk in shame. I, I know that I've had the thought, well, you know, if all of this is going on and I've prayed and I've done this, maybe I'm just doing something wrong. Maybe I just need to stop this. And yet, as I listen to you, that's not at all what your great, great grandfather did. And that's not what you did in your life in these seasons of suffering. Mm. Paul said that his greatest, his greatest goal was that he would be transformed by suffering and that he would know the fellowship of Christ's sufferings. Mm. And how can we know Christ if we don't know suffering? And we want to know him. We want not just to know him, but we want to actually be like him. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we, we become most like him in our suffering. Yeah. Um, I, I think that there's an incredible need today uh, when, when people uh, don't acknowledge their suffering, but they want to numb it. And I've numbed my suffering for many years with, with whatever's out there to numb sure. suffering with. We don't, we don't want to suffer. Um, but I think people are more broken today than ever because they're not, they're not acknowledging that there is a need or a pain. Yeah. And yeah. so I guess if there were ever a time for us to be talking and for you to be, to be sharing what's on your heart, it's... Um, People are desperate today to know that suffering is, uh, it's for all of us, mm -hmm. but that we can get through it and actually help others get through it at the same well, time. You know, it's a part of life it in is. a fallen world. It is. And so I think as we embrace that, mm -hmm. and, and I think as you said, to encourage one another, hey, mm -hmm. we can do this. Mm -hmm. Hey, you can do this. Mm -hmm. I've been through X, Y, Z. I'm yeah. still going yes. through this. Yes that I trust Christ, I can do this. Not mm -hmm. that it's easy, mm -hmm. not that it's not hard, not that we don't shed tears. You know, I think that whole concept mm -hmm. of just put a smile mm -hmm. on your face, mm -hmm. I'm okay, you're yeah. okay. Jesus, you know, everything yeah. is good. It's not helpful no. to growth. It's no. not helpful to maturation. Mm -hmm. I understand why we do it because mm -hmm. I've done it. I have to. I've done it thinking that it's my only option. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I did it to be hypocritical, mm -hmm. but like I just thought, well, you know, he works all things out for the mm -hmm. good, so I'm just going to muster a mm -hmm. smile through this. And I think that if I would have been willing to take mm -hmm. a few more risks to say, mm -hmm. you know what, I'm in a lot of pain. I mm -hmm. know that he's going to work this yeah. all out for good. But right yeah. now... It's not seeming so good. Mm. Do you think that's more the right approach? I do. I think there, uh, uh, there's this idea that uh, we praise him in the midst of it, but then we actually bring our hearts that are broken in the midst of it. Mm -hmm. So it's two. It, we're holding a broken heart, but we're coming to him with it. Mm -hmm. And that's praise. It's not denying uh, what we're feeling or what we've been through. It's not denying that. It's saying, you know my brokenness. You know my heart. Mm -hmm. And you know that this is this feels like it's too much. I think that's when we give him worship. I think that's, we're responding. That mm -hmm. means we're showing up with whatever it is. Mm -hmm. We're saying, I don't know what to do with any of this. I'm sad, I'm lonely, I'm broken, I'm angry, whatever is going on in us. I think that's more authentic and genuine, much more authentic and genuine than us saying everything's okay. Absolutely. When and it's that's not how, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's how we 
began to experience yeah. his presence. Right. Right. He says he's close to the brokenhearted. Right. He's close to those crushed in right. spirit. So if I can just go ahead and mm -hmm. say, mm -hmm. I am broken beyond mm -hmm. what I can even see mm -hmm. repair for. I am crushed yeah. and I really, I don't know mm -hmm. what to do. And I will let those mm -hmm. tears mm -hmm. roll and just to be, to risk enough to be yeah. honest with him, yeah. he meets me in that place. And that gives me a strength. Mm -hmm. It doesn't always bring immediate relief, but it gives me a strength to bear up mm -hmm. with grace mm -hmm. instead of hiding a lot of all that in my heart. Mm -hmm. Is that a part of why you wrote the book, The Inheritance, to help people tell their stories? Yes. I, I think it's one of the most important things we can do. Sometimes we hear testimony and we think, oh, the day I was saved. Yeah. I'm going to go back to 1978 <laughs> and tell you about the day I was saved. And what I think yeah. what, what, what Jesus and, and the, the gospel means is, now I want you to tell every single moment that I showed up when you didn't even know I was there. Yeah. And I'm going, to, I'm going to remind you of when I showed up. So for me, writing the book was, Lord, I don't remember when you showed up. Would you help me? Mm -hmm. And so I have to go back to those painful moments and those moments of loss and almost put myself there and whoa, I look around at the situation and I see parents that loved me and opportunity that came my way and doctors that were good and knew what they were doing and friends that God gave during seasons of hardship. And then I begin to see the blessing mm. surrounded by great pain. And, and when I began to recount in my own mind, I thought, man, I wonder if people need to be able to do this themselves. And so it is helping people tell their story. The painful parts, because those are the parts people aren't telling but I think those are the parts that bring freedom. Yeah. It, both in our, in our own life, but also for other people. Well, because there's that immediate recognition of, oh my goodness, I'm not alone. Yes. She understands yes. what I'm talking about. She's had yes. that. May not be the same thing that I've gone through. And then there's that mm -hmm. connection that is without judgment. Yes. Like we've all yes. been there and it's easier to be close mm -hmm. and to have relationship. And that's what we're all longing we for. Are, I think are. especially in this techie sort of age where yes. there's so little eye to eye mm. contact. So, you know, we're, and I, I don't think it's mm. bad to text. I don't think it's mm. bad to be on the internet, but we really yeah. do long, you know, for human relationship yeah. and companionship that's real, yeah. that goes more than just that. Mm -hmm that surface and I think that that's what you're saying yeah I think we we need to practice doing it more mm -hmm. I think we've forgotten just the art of being honest with people um, and I think we rob we rob other people of their own growth when we don't tell our own story mm -hmm. when we try to look like we have it all together or we look like the perfect Christian or the perfect mom or um, I like think we what rob would that be anyway what is that <laughs> I don't even know I, I, I don't know anyone alive that Aside from Jesus, I don't know anybody alive, yeah. which gives me hope because we're not alone. We're not, yeah. there's not a standard except for him. You know, and even though Jesus is the only one mm. that brings perfection mm. to the table, totally a sinless, mm. flawless, he suffered. Yeah, he, did. he did. So not every moment of his life, even though he mm. is perfection, mm -hmm. even though he is the word incarnate, mm -hmm. He suffered. Yeah. He had to feel physical pain mm -hmm. on the cross. That did mm -hmm. not look perfect, mm -hmm. even though he's mm -hmm. perfection. He was in dire pain mm -hmm. that did not feel perfect. Mm -hmm. He had to be fully man yeah. for us to know that we weren't alone. Yeah. You think to the, fully the great lengths that he went yeah. to yeah. so that we could not be fully alone. We yeah. have just just a little bit of time left. Tell me one more thing that you hope people will get from the inheritance. Well, I think one of the things, if, if you have children, I think it's important for you to tell your story. Mm -hmm. uh, it, obviously, depending on their age, different parts of your right. story might not be appropriate for young people. Um, but I think we need to be honest first with ourselves um, and figure out what on earth we're doing. <laughs> and... Um, take a real honest look at our own lives yeah. and are there places that that I can shore up are there places that I haven't actually reconciled in my past because if we're broken and we haven't done the reconciling it's very difficult to help other people heal yeah and so that is a life that's called sanctification that's a lifelong <laughs> process but that's right we need to be doing our work um, and then in the process of doing that and being honest with ourselves I think we have to be honest with our family mm -hmm. and continue to show them 
uh, our kids uh, what it looks like to walk through sanctification. Absolutely. And if so we don't important. have kids, it's whoever God puts around mm -hmm. you because he's always putting people around us that that we need to be pouring into. Absolutely. And so well, We're out of time, but I want I to thank you so much for coming. You're so welcome. It's, it's an honor. Good it's to have you. The book again here. is The Inheritance by Johanna Mackin, and I'll be back in just a moment with closing comments. Don't give in. God's word says you're an overcomer. It takes training. It takes discipline. And so when you're fighting that good fight of the faith, you take your story, whatever it is, and you saturate it in faith and you fight for it. Visit monicaschmelter.com to schedule Monica to speak at your next event. When it comes to suffering, that can be a really challenging conversation, especially in some Christian circles. But you know, the Bible teaches us that no servant is better than his master. And it's saying basically that if Jesus had to suffer, then we also will have to suffer. But the wonderful thing about having a relationship with Jesus Christ is that we don't suffer alone. We can bring our suffering, our pain, our brokenness to God and be honest with him exactly how we feel, what we're thinking, how maybe we even wish that season would go away. And when we bring him our honesty, the Bible says that God is close to the brokenhearted and that he's close to those that are crushed in spirit. So I hope that as you've watched today and as you think about any suffering that you might be going through, that you won't be afraid to tell God exactly how you feel about it. What God does in our seasons of suffering can be a beautiful thing. He grows us up. He grows us up in character. He gives us strength. Sometimes the very blessings that we long for are on the other side of our suffering. But even in the midst of our suffering, we can grow closer to God. We can grow closer to others as we share. Hey, none of us have it all figured out. Each of us, we're trusting Christ in the middle of our situation and in the midst of suffering. We're out of time. We've got to go, but we say goodbye and God bless you. Don't give in. God's word says you're an overcomer. It takes training. It takes discipline. And so when you're fighting that good fight of the faith, you take your story, whatever it is, and you saturate it in faith and you fight for it. Visit monicaschmelter.com to schedule Monica to speak at your next event. Do you have a ministry or business? You can contact Nashville's WHTN for studio and programming rates. Visit ctntv.org slash studio or call 615-754-0039 for more details.